up, JB Navy? It's your Captain Jasmine Black, and I'm back with another video. And today's video is featuring. And now a word from our sponsors. One more hair, and I am rocking their curly hair. Yes, I am. And the hair details are definitely down below. I am feeling this curly hair. Let me give y'all a twirl and a look. I made this hair into a closure unit okay and i sewed it by hand this is probably going to be the last unit i make by hand because i am now into the sewing machine technique but yes these waves are everything um i put some mousse on it so basically what i did is take this mousse here and this is a volume control mousse and a hold mousse so if you ever want to like hold your curl powder in and maybe even put down your frizzies on the top of your hair this will definitely be the mousse you want to get. Any mousse that says that it has a um, holding spray in it, make them all go in one pattern, you know? Keeps my curls in, make them really smooth. All right, I don't think I got no lashes. God damn it. Oh, okay, all right. Now I gotta make sure this bad boy is in place. There we go. In place. I ain't got no bra on. <laughs> bra, bitch, wear. <laughs> you know? Okay, anyway. All right, you guys. So I had made a post yesterday. Um, I'm getting ready for work. I'm sorry, I'm rushing. I'm all over the place. Um, I ain't have no nap. A bitch is grumpy, okay? Um, anyway, so. Okay, foundation right here. Okay, so yeah, I made a post yesterday, you know on the in the like where i make posts at like on the community section and it says something to the effect of i don't have my phone but it basically says something to the effect of like if you're a mother it's okay to cry it's okay to get your nails done it's okay to get a babysitter it's okay to relax it's okay Every, it's okay everything's okay whatever you want to do it's okay you're still a good mother you know and i'm i'm really big on this topic i actually did a video on this a long time ago but I feel like I didn't really get to kind of like go in depth or give better examples. So I'm going to do it now while I'm doing my makeup and getting ready for work. So basically, I need napkins. Hold on, you guys, because I'm all over the place. Don't be talking about my office chair either. Somebody was like, you know, you can get a really nice chair from. So I know where I can get a nice chair from. I got nice chairs. It's just that one is at my under my vanity. Um, the other one is behind my desk and you know i'm gonna get me a nice chair but right now this is the chair that i'm using <laughs> but yeah so i'm a mom um i have my son at 21 mikhail king mikhail to be exact that's my baby and he is six years old and at the time that i had my son i was popping like i was lit like i was i was still dancing i was i was 19 when i got with his dad and i moved out at 17 but by between 17 and 19 20 I was lit, like dancing, I was making a whole bunch of money, I was going to casting calls, I was living my best life. I was finding myself, I was um, doing the things that I wanted to do, which was modeling, like I was living my best life. And then when me and his dad hooked up, I started playing house. And basically playing house means like you, 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 you get into this relationship at a young age, you think you're ready for all these big responsibilities. You think you're ready to have a baby. You think you're ready to be a housewife. You think you're just ready to be grown, basically, because you think you're grown. You think 20's grown. You think 19's grown. So we started playing house, and I got pregnant at 21. Some people would say that's a great age. Yeah, it's a great age, but was it a great time? It really wasn't a good time for me because I'm living my life. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a promising career to me, which looks promising. I'm thinking that either I'm going to be on TV. I'm just thinking that my I had a website. I always had an online store. I just thought I was going to be this bomb entrepreneur, this model, this vixen, this something. I knew I was going to be something big. And I got pregnant. And in my head, I'm thinking like, it's only nine months. It's just one baby. I got hella support. He got hella support. I'm going to just have my baby. And life is going to return to normal. And completely wrong life did not return to normal so easily you know like even my pregnancy was tough so fast forward i have my son me and his dad obviously did not work it took years for me to even discover that i did not jump right back into the things i was doing in my career actually 
actually within that nine months of me like taking time to have my son everything around me had changed like within that year everything had changed like i had returned back to dancing none of the things that was going on nine months ago was going on then like before i had my son the club was filled with money money was everywhere so i'm thinking you know i'm gonna have my baby and i'll be back when i returned back to the dance scene it had dried up like it you know dancing like just like everything in life it goes through these changes and within the nine months of being, me being down everything had changed i literally put on my outfit got my clothes together i had some weight on me from my son i was like i'm about to come back to the club like yeah yeah i'm here i'm back bitches like i thought I thought it was gonna be like that. I got to that club, it was dry all night. I looked as stupid, I felt stupid. Everybody running up to me like, oh, you had your baby, you had your baby, girl, it's been slow. You know what I'm saying? So everything had changed around me, like everything was not the same. So, um, I had my son and now I'm in this state of, I don't wanna call it depression. I was in this state of, what do I do now? Like. I thought that I was just going to go back to regular life. I thought everything was just going to come back together. And that's not what happened. You know what? It's really hard to move around and talk at the same time. I'm noticing that. So if I say some things rep repetitively, forgive me. Where do I go now? What do I do now with myself? And I just lost myself. I ain't going to lie. For a minute, I lost myself. For a minute, I had no idea what I wanted. For a minute, I just was like, okay, maybe I just, maybe I do want to be a housewife. Maybe I do just want to be in the house, take care of my son, you know, be with his father and just run my online business or work a job if if I had to, which I did do. I did go back to work and I worked at, um, where I work at? I was the manager of Family Dollar in Philly. And then what else did I do in Philly? I danced. And there was even a time I had to move and go live with my mom for a little bit in Indiana. There was even a time like, I just felt like everything was falling apart. I lost myself. I was in a state of depression. I had lost weight. I remember being like a hundred pounds. Like I had lost so much weight. I was so depressed. I didn't know who I was anymore. And so around 24, 25 years old, 24, I was 24. I just said, I can't take this no more. I was never meant to just sit around like this. I wasn't meant to struggle. I wasn't meant to be a housewife. I wasn't meant to just not do the things that I knew I was supposed to be doing. I just wasn't meant to be just sitting there. So I had arranged for my son to live with his father and for my son's dad's parents to help him with my son. And I came to Atlanta. I packed my car up, literally packed my car up and moved to Atlanta. And it was, it was actually the best decision I ever made in my life. Now, during this time of me letting my son live with his father, which actually, because I didn't have nobody here. I, didn't, I don't have a lot of family here. I didn't have nobody here. Um, I went through a lot of shit. Every time a friend got mad at me, this was the first thing they said. Your son don't even live with you. You, you know, every, that was like what everybody said all the time. That was everybody shot at me. Your son don't even live with you. You don't even got your son. This isn't that. Literally, I, I I didn't even, like, my son lived with me for a couple months because I attempted to do it by myself because the comments were getting to me. So I brought him down here for, like, two months, and it just was, it was impossible. It was impossible. And he was sad, too. It just made him sad because it was like, I brought him here. Now he got to go to a babysitter when I go to work. He didn't want to be there. He's so used to being around family. My son never really had a babysitter. He We always had people around that helped us that was family. So... If I took him to his grandparents' house, he felt like, oh, I'm just at my grandparents' house. But when I took him to a stranger house and said, it's your babysitter, he's like, hold up. And he would cry and go crazy until you picked him up. So it made me sad having to drop him off. It was just all unnecessary, all because I'm trying to avoid what people are saying. When he can honestly just go stay with his dad for a little bit until I get myself together. So I got over, like, worried about what people say, and I finally just let him completely stay with his dad for a little bit. And then I got myself all the way 100% together, and now he lives with me permanently like my son there's no reason for him to go anywhere there's no reason like because i've already i did what i was supposed to do in that time of him living with his dad so he can live here permanently i need something on my lips my lips feel chat i'm not doing any of my makeup i need to be doing my makeup because i gotta go to work i just want to tell like mothers out there like 
you have the same rights the father has. You have the same rights. When he want to get up and go do something, it's okay. You have those rights too. If you want to go out with your girlfriends, he can watch the kids. If you need a break from the kids, he can watch the kids. If you need to go out of town, he can watch the kids. You are not a deadbeat mother. You are not a bad mother for taking a break. You are not a bad mother for taking a trip. You are not a bad mother for spending money on yourself. None of that. All these statistics around what woman, women should be and what women should do, out of here. I don't believe in any of them. When it comes to children, it takes two to mate, so two people hold a responsibility. Now, like the law of nature, yeah, the, the children come from the women. And I think we have a stronger bond with the children. But should it be that way? No, it shouldn't be that way. Like, I think it's an equal balance for us, to, for uh, the man and the woman to take care of the kids. When you watch movies, they always show the mother getting the kids together in the morning time and handing them their breakfast. And the dad is like rushing out the door with his suitcase, like, love you, honey. Give her a kiss on the cheek, pat the kids on the head and leave. Like, because we have created this stereotype that women are supposed to like, cater to the kids and the men are supposed to go work and do their things. But what do you do when the man isn't working and not doing what he's supposed to do and not within the household? Like, what about women like that? What about the women that's playing mother and father? They don't need a break sometimes. You'll have baby fathers who try to put you down for asking you to babysit. Like my friend just went through this uh, with her baby father. And he was like, basically like, you need me to watch your daughter. And it's like, it's not just my kid. This is both of our kid. There is no yours. There is no mine. It's ours. And I just believe that it's okay to take a break. I believe it's okay to get yourself together. I, I just always tell women that if you have a strong support system, use it. If your mother wants to help you with the kids, let her. If your sister want to help you, if you got people around you that you trust, let them help you with the kids. You are not a bad person. You, you deserve a break. You got to remember that you're going to be raising these kids forever. You are going to be mom for the rest of your life. Forever. You're going to be mom forever. Rather they 60 rather than six you're going to be mom forever so it's okay to take these breaks especially when they're given to you because the help does not last forever the help is not always there anytime a family member say that they're going to help me i always keep it in mind because i may need that help i don't shut it down you know i may not take it right away but i don't shut it down and kudos to you women that have multiple kids man for real for real because i got one and i cannot freaking imagine having more than one i get so tired of men like putting down women about how, what, how they should be as mothers and what they supposed to do and what they should do and all that stuff i get tired of that i get tired of women putting down other women like i get tired of women with no kids putting down women that have kids you have no idea of the struggle that women with kids go through and i know there's some women out there so some women that are mothers that mess it up for really good mothers that want a break like the, the the mothers that go out there that get a break and don't pick up their kids on time or abuse um or abuse the people that's giving them a break or take advantage of babysitters and things like that like those type of women that's not cool what they're doing either but i believe like i believe that some of them are not used to getting breaks so they don't it's like it's just like having a kid it's just like sheltering a child right and then you finally let them out and they don't come home on time and you like, see, this is why I don't let you out. But you got to kind of understand that they never really had, they never really been able to have fun. So they might just be, you know, a little too excited. But I can understand how it's, it's not right. But I do understand how that can happen. You know what I mean? Like a mother taking advantage or doing the most when people offer help. Now, you definitely don't want to burn your bridges. Don't burn your bridges. Like be respectful, call your kids, check on your kids. You know, pick your kids up on time. But if somebody offer you help, you know keep it in mind and I'm happy that I'm doing like that I got all that out the way while my son was young but you know the thing about it is like my son missed me being around but I'm happy we was in the era of well we still are in that era of FaceTiming and communication and technology because I was able to FaceTime my son every night and he was able to FaceTime me anytime he wanted I was able to talk to him face to face. You know, I even took trips to Philadelphia for those months that he was there. I took trips to Philadelphia all the time to see him and spend holidays with him because he was up there for about, I want to say, 
I don't want to say a year for some reason. I don't want to say he was up there for a year. I want to say he was up there for about eight months. But remember, this is a back and forth thing. He came here and I sent him back there again. So, yeah, I'm going to say all together of the time that he was up there was probably about eight months. Like, you know, but I will rather sacrifice eight months than to sacrifice years of trying to get myself together. I would rather like go ahead and sacrifice eight months to get myself together than to keep like mommy gotta get herself together, mommy gotta get herself together, mommy gotta get herself together over and over and over again. Like some people don't just take that time and do it. You get you get worried about what people say. Um you get too excited and happy about the freedom and you don't do what you're supposed to do. You know there's different reasons for why you don't get yourself together when you have it but let me tell you something when that support going you're going to miss it so if you have a strong if you have a strong support system take advantage of it in the most positive way that you possibly can like get yourself together for real for real i think females in all aspects of life are the strongest species on earth like just giving birth alone validates that to me and I'm talking about like, it don't have to be physically. It can be mentally, emotionally. I know we break down sometimes, but I think we can handle things way better than men. You know, just a weird ass example. You may hear about a woman, you know, killing everybody in the house a couple times on the news. Not as much as I hear men going crazy and doing that shit. I just think we take on more. All the single mothers out there, be strong. Cause them babies need you and they need to see you strong they need to see you strong they need to see your strength but when you need to cry when you need to take a nap when you need to get out the house do it when you need to take a trip do it i do not want you no longer to feel bad about doing things that make you feel good because in order for you in order for you to be a good mother you have to be good with it and you have to feel good and you have to be good that's the only way you're going to be a good mom. Like, when I was miserable in my relationship, I felt like, how can I smile and play with my baby? Because he was so young then. I'm like, how can I smile and play with my baby? Like, how can I be a good mother? Your kids can feel that shit. Like, how can I be a good mother if I can't even be good to myself? Like, it just wasn't working out. So I knew I had to do what I had to do to make me feel better. I knew I had to chase my dreams. I knew I had to chase my, my goals. I knew I had to do it because that was the only way I was going to survive mentally. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, a lot of times people try to make it seem like once you get pregnant or once you have a baby, your life is over. I've even heard people say that. Oh, you know, you know, once you have this baby, all that stuff that you're doing is over with. No, it's not. My life ain't over at all. My life just begun. And it just begun with a new character to my chapter. That's how I try to look at it when you talking about kids and life. Like, my life just has a new character to the chapter. It's going to continue. Now, things may change in this chapter, but we're going to get back on track. And that's how I look at it. Like, my life did not, did not, was not over at all when I had my son. I just had to replan and come up with a game plan to incorporate him in my life and still keep my goals. Taraji P. How you say her last name? Henderson said that she was 27 years old, my age now. Went moved to LA with her son, her baby boy, and went and auditioned for the role in Baby Boy and other things. And look at who she is today. And if you have them friends or them people that try to bash you for your kids being at their grandmom house while you handle business, fuck them. Because they just jealous. Either one, they don't have kids. Or two, they don't have the same support you got. And they jealous and they mad. That's what I feel like. And you know what's so funny? One of the girls that used to make like fucked up comments about my son being in Philadelphia while I was here. And how I, oh, you just came here to be a stripper and you left your son with his dad. All those comments, guess what? She got a baby. And guess where her son at? Exactly. With the fucking grandparents. Because she can't handle it. Now, do I find that funny? No, but I find it ironic as fuck. Karma's a bitch. Karma is a bitch. You know what? To be honest with you, 
I feel like my son probably like made me go way harder. One, I have my GED. I don't have a, a high school and diploma, and I'm gonna tell you guys more about why I have a GED. But um, before my son, I was practicing for the GED, and I never went and took it. I ended up like getting pregnant, of course, <laughs> and I wasn't working. I wasn't dancing no more, and I didn't. My son, dad, you know, he held it down. I didn't have to work. And so while I was home, I was just like, I need to get my GED. And then I set a date. I said, I'm gonna have my GED before my son get here. And I had it. Just imagine if I didn't, like wasn't pregnant and wasn't sitting down. I think like, I wouldn't even have been thinking about that. I wouldn't even been thinking about completing my GED. So kids are not always this big negative thing. Sometimes they're a positive thing too. Like my son keeps me young. Like my son makes me very, very happy. My son helps me not be lonely. Like. My son is like, I look so forward to seeing him every day. I feel like he my man. Like my son is like my best friend and I love him. And I love the responsibility of having him. Like the responsibility of having him makes me take care of myself and my business. Like it just makes me want more. You know, people, people who don't have kids that are like really, really motivated. Like that's dope. Like, you know, because before my son, I was kind of just like, whatever happens, happens. You know, I wanted the model and of course I wanted the career, but I don't know if I would be as hungry for success as I am now without kid, without my kid. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's just me. You know, when it's just you, you can sleep on people's couches and work it out. But when you got a kid, uh-uh, that's a whole different grind right there. Like, ain't no sleeping on the couch. Like, where's my child going to go? Like, ain't none of that. You know what I mean? You want the best and you're going to go way harder than you would for yourself. I mean, that's in some cases, not everybody. You know, there's some people out there with no kids that's going super hard because something else is motivating them. Maybe it's their parents, maybe it's money, maybe they have other people they take care of. But I know for me, what drives me is the responsibility of my son. And I don't have no lashes to put on. I wonder if I should go dark tonight. Like this dark color that I haven't opened yet. I don't know, I really like this one, but maybe I should just Dab it. See what color it turned into. Alright, so I don't have no goddamn lashes to put on because oh, I left them. But I'll get some at work. Okay, so what you should have got from today's discussion is no matter if you're a housewife, um, a single mother, uh, a mother in a complicated relationship, a mother in a pretty good relationship, girl, listen, do you follow your dreams find some type of way to incorporate your children and you can still have your dream find a way to incorporate your goals because i'm telling you right now if you do not live out your true destiny or like what you were meant to be or what you were fulfill whatever it is that you wanted to do while you were on this earth you are going to be so miserable okay you want to think about it all the time. Everything is going to be what if. Everything is going to be I wish I never had kids. It's going to be all these negative thoughts. It's going to be all this negative shit. But if you find a way to incorporate your goals and your dreams and the things you want to do and your peacefulness and all of that within your relationship and while being a mother, I promise you, you will feel fulfilled. You will feel great. You will feel gratitude for your children. You will feel happy and peaceful. The only reason why people regret children is because they either just did not get to live the life that they felt like they should have lived. But that's their fault because you can still have that life. Now, I know for some people it's extremely hard, but it's not impossible. I don't believe that anything is impossible, okay? So, do what you got to do, girl. Use that support system. Take that break. Cry it out. Scream. Go get a massage. Go get your nails done. Let them kids stay with their dad for the weekend, girl. Go have fun. Go have a one-night stand, girl. Go do your thing, okay? Until next time, JB Navy, I'm out.